Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is God's answer to the problem of the Old Testament. See, there's a great difference between the man of the Old Testament and the man of the New. Most Christians are still trying to live by the Old Testament. Study the Old Testament section of the Bible. There's a lot of wisdom. That's God's word. Alright? But do not try to live the life of the Old Testament. The old contract. Without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the, the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Are you catching it now? So he says, hey, I'm not trying to run down the law. No, no, no. What I'm telling you is, the law, the law gave opportunity to sin to destroy me. He said, because I didn't know what sin was until the law came. I didn't know what lust was until the law said, thou shalt not covet. He said, so, the law now gave opportunity to sin to produce in me all manner of evil desire. Are you catching it now? So he abolished it. Okay, 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 okay. That's just number one. That, listen, Jesus fulfilled the law and abolished it. And gave us life. The Christian. How does he live? The reason the Christian. Should not steal. The reason the Christian should not lie. Is it because the Bible says. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. No. As long as you're trying to obey the law. As long as you're trying not to lie. Because the Bible says thou shalt not lie. You will lie. All the things you don't want to do. Because the commandment said so. You will do them. You know why? Because the more you function in that area, the more you would discover it never worked and it will never work. That's the reason Jesus came. Because they could not obey the law. So Jesus came, obeyed the law, fulfilled it and canceled it. And took us out of the bondage. Hallelujah. And then gave us a life. I'll show that to you now. The Christian doesn't need to keep the law. Why? He does not need a law. Do you know what? Listen, a dog barks because it's a dog. A cat does not bark. It is not supposed to bark. If you saw a cat going, Woo! You would say, what? I mean, you feel something is wrong. This is strange. Or if you saw, just imagine this whole choir, immediately after the service, they all just got down on their knees, there, and their hands, and all started going like that, and they're going, going home. <laughs> on all fours. What would you think? I mean, and they just did it naturally as though nothing was wrong. They just started going, just like that. Would that be normal? Why would you think something's wrong? Because that's not the way a normal human being walks. A normal human being walks with his two legs. But while a child, a baby, he may creep. With all four limbs. But the reason you will permit that is because he is still very young. And you know, in the process of time, he will learn to walk like a normal person. 
But if by the time he's one year, two years, and he's still doing that, you want to see a doctor or a preacher. Am I right? That's the way God looks at us. When you have received Christ. Oh. The Bible says Christ is your life. When you have Christ in you, no sickness can take possession of your body. But many Christians do get sick. Because they're like that child that's still creeping. Can you see it? Many Christians still live in sin. They're in the bondage of sin. All the time. Ah, I told a lie yesterday. They, they can't worship. They can't. There's so many things they can't do because sin dominates them. Holds them in bondage. All the time they want to do something right. They feel like you're not qualified. Why? You're just, you're, you're not even righteous. The Christian. Hey, come on. Who's a Christian? Is it the person that said, I've chosen to be a Christian from today. I think I'm a Christian. Come on. Is that what it is to be a Christian? Mm -mm. There is the manward side and there is the Godward side. Alright? The manward side is the decision, the believing, and the confession. The Godward side is the impartation. What do I mean? In Romans chapter 10, from verse 9, he says, that if thou shalt confess, profess, announce, declare with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 says, For with the heart, that's the spirit, man believeth unto righteousness. That means man believes and is made right with God. And then it says, And with the mouth, confession is made. Unto salvation. With the mouth you declare yourself. And catapult yourself by that faith declaration. Into salvation. You see that? So the Christian is the man that has been born again. To be born again means that you have received eternal life into your spirit. And now when you are born again it doesn't mean. That from that day you will never do wrong. You don't want to. The desire to go to do wrong is definitely out. It's not part of your life. But you may do wrong. It's possible. So he tells us, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Now, I, I've always pointed out to you, he didn't say, when any man sins. In other words, he didn't say, Listen, I know you must have to sin. So no, he says, if, which means it's not compulsory you sin. You don't have to. Hallelujah. But as a growing Christian, there will be mistakes here and there, like a growing child learning to walk. Eventually that child will learn to walk, and then he will learn to run. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I said, Amen. Okay, uh, can I show you that part of it? About you, you, you don't have, a, a Christian doesn't need a law. Why? When you have eternal life in you, thank you Lord Jesus, this is God's answer to the problem of the Old Testament. The Bible tells us there was no law that could give life. He says, there was no law. That could give life. And so righteousness could not come by the law. No law could give life. And so the Bible says, God finding fault with the Old Testament produced a better one. Not because the law was wrong, but because it was not powerful enough to do what God wanted. So he did something even greater. Thank you Lord Jesus. So let me read that to you. You should not forget this. Keep it in your mind. Sing about it every day. Meditate on it. First Timothy. Chapter 
Are you there? First Timothy chapter 1. Have you found it? Hello, hello, hello. Have you got it? First Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Hey, this is fantastic. I like it. He says the law is good if a man use it lawfully. What is he saying? Now, I'm using the law lawfully. What does that mean? Use the law as the word has said you should use it. That's what he's saying. He says the law is good if you use it lawfully. Hmm. Let's go and you'll catch it. Knowing this, he says, we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Hallelujah. The law is not made for what? A righteous man. Hey, hold on. We will go on. Just stop there. Just stop there. Hey, stop what? Stop right there. Okay. Go to the book of James very quickly. Put a marker there because we're coming back there. Book of James. Chapter 5. Read verse 16. Are you there? Book of James, chapter 5. Read verse 16. Want to go. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hey, stop. Is he talking to angels or to human beings? Okay, go on. Confess, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Read that last part again. The what? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous angel. Hey. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous God. What did you see in your Bible? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. At least that point shows that there is a righteous man somewhere. Is that correct? All right. Now, just taking that, understanding that God sees that that is possible, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, he says, availeth much. All right? Okay, go back to First Timothy. The prayer of a righteous man, he says, works. All right? Now, read again verse 9. Want to go. Stop. That means that guy whose prayer the Bible says is effectual. All right? That it, the prayer that it says works. Avail it much. All right? That righteous man in James chapter 5. He's telling us now that the law was not made for that guy. If that guy exists at all, if there's such a man, if he exists at all, the law is not made for him. Hey, come on. Do you agree with that? Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Knowing this, verse 9 again, chapter 1, 1 Timothy, that the law is not made... Now, just in case you're thinking he's talking about constitutional law of various nations, I will go back one moment. The law of Moses was the written constitution of Israel. And we are dealing with the law of Moses, beginning with the Ten Commandments. Is that correct? All right. Now, you can immediately see that in verse number 7, all right, where he says, talking about certain folks, he says, desiring to be teachers of the law, 
understanding what they say, nor whereof they affirm. Now that's not the first time you will come across the term teachers of the law. Now these teachers of the law were there in Jesus' day. You remember? And they withstood Jesus. You remember that? So we're dealing with that same law. Okay. So here he says, verse 9, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane. Did you notice? And for sinners. Did you see that? Sinners. That means the righteous man he's talking about is not a sinner. Let's go on. For unholy. Unholy. And profane. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. For manslayers. For all mongers. For them that defy themselves with mankind. That's homosexuals. For men stealers. For liars. Perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Hallelujah. The law. Doesn't belong to a righteous man. Now. If you belong to Christ, the Bible says, Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In Romans chapter 5, look at chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, quickly. Chapter 5, read verse 1. Want to go. Okay, is that past tense, present tense, or future tense? One, two. Come on, tell me. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been justified by faith. Now, a better rendering says, therefore, being made righteous, or being declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God. Amen. All right, now in that same chapter, look at verse 17. Read verse 17. One, two, go. Have you seen that? For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which is of abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Righteousness is what? A gift. When you are born again, you are imparted with eternal life. The Spirit of God comes to live in you. Can you say amen? Now look at chapter 6 and read verse 1. Go on. Did you see that? How shall we that what? Are dead to sin. See, understand how God sees us. As far as God is concerned, we are dead to sin. Sin is no longer a problem. But why then do we sin? Are we supposed to? No. Two things are responsible. Number one, ignorance. That's the number one thing that's responsible for sin. If only we knew that we were righteous and that we could live righteously, we would do better. Ignorance. Number two, is wrong desire. And the wrong desire can be tamed by the word of God. Can you see that? The more of God's word you have in you, the more the spirit of God in you will help you dominate the forces of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 6. Read verse 6. Verse 7. <laughs> Hallelujah. He calls you dead. He says you are dead to sin. But now you are alive to God. Look at verse 11. Read it. Want to go.
Read verse 12. Can you see it? Can you see it's in your hand? Can you see it's up to you? Can you see you can actually do something about it? See, he's brought you out. He doesn't see you in sin. When you find yourself doing something wrong, God says, Hello. What's the matter? And he says, Lord, I've just been telling lies here. He says, All right. Now, take a bath with the word of God. Wash it off quick. Wash it off. And you wash it off. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The word of God is a cleanser. In John chapter 15, verse 3, Jesus said, You are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. And you wash yourself clean. And say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then you leave that life that he has given us. How simple.